I want to call this meeting of the Ohio County Fiscal Court to order uh, October the 18th, 2022. Uh, Anna, what If you would be so kind, would you uh, say a prayer and lead us in the place to the flag? Yes, let me get my stuff put down here. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support as we begin this meeting. Help us engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of community. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Sam. The uh, first item on our agenda tonight is uh, the approval of September the 27th uh, minutes of the meeting. Make a motion. Second. Motion to Sam, second by Joe Barnes uh, to approve the minutes of the meeting. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passed. Next item on the agenda is bills, claims, payments, and transfers. If I could have a motion and a second, that, and then we can discuss. One thing, one thing uh, do we need to pass for the, the 30th minutes, too? Yeah. Yeah. Let, let, that, let that motion reflect that. Okay. Okay. And remember, we got a light list. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, and the late list, if I can have a motion, then we'll uh, second we'll discuss. Motion. Second. Motion Sam Small, second by Joe Barnes. Uh, discussion? Any questions about the bills and claims? And on page 13, down at the bottom, there's one, two, three, four items for our father's house. Where's that money coming out of? That's ARPA money. They were awarded $44,000. And this finishes up. And that they're done now. They're that's done. all of them. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? If not, uh, all in favor. Say aye. Aye. Motion carried. Uh, need a motion for the treasurer's report, financial report. I make a motion. We acknowledge. I'll second. Motion for Sam Small, second by Joe Barnes to accept the financial, acknowledge, accept the financial statement from the treasurer. All in favor? Aye. Motion passed. I also make a motion to accept the clerk's September 2022 financial report. I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. Aye. Motion passed. Uh, yeah. And you may want to uh, elaborate on the ARPA funds here. Uh, on the ARPA funds, we've gotten our second distribution, and it is just in a regular checking account. And I would like to be authorized to open up a savings account to move the bulk of it in there so we can earn better interest on it. So we're allowed to earn interest on it? Yes. That okay. was specifically uh, told to us that we could. How much is still in it? About 2.5 million. I'll make a motion. Motion by Joe Barnes. Second. Second by Sam Small <coughs> to uh, create a fund savings account uh, for the ARPA, ARPA funds. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 Motion passed. Judge, I'd like to uh, make a motion on the next uh, resolution on number seven. I'd like to make a motion to approve the RDAP. Resolution 2023-15 as presented uh, uh, for the SPEGE. Do I hear a second? For discussion. Second for discussion. Discussion by Joe Barnes. Or <laughs> second by Joe Barnes. Uh, go ahead, Joe. Now that's the uh, that's what y'all do every year on the RDAP fund. That's Mm. The, uh, yes, it's, uh, okay. it extends out. We get eighty thousand for the debt service for the water expansion project, uh, which thirty of that we will get back. Uh, 
to put into, uh, I think it goes to the Oceda, it's what funds the Oceda. Okay. Uh, then you have your mainly local uh, publication and the Bluegrass Crossing Industrial Park electric expansion. Uh, Where's it coming from? It's from RDAP. At RDAP, is that the TVA money? That we, I mean, that the, the other word for it? Yes, it is TVA. TVA. it's the TVA money. Okay. Um, perfectly fine with that. Any further discussion? Uh, Sam, you want to roll call on this, or it's just a resolution, but... Yeah, that'd be fine. Maybe. Okay, let's roll, let's roll call it. Uh, Barnes? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Uh, the next item on the agenda is ordinance for electrical inspe inspector. This is the second reading. This will be an ordinance. Uh, if I can... Here, a motion and a second. I make a motion. I'll second. Motion by Larry Moore, a few seconds by Joe Barnes on the uh, second reading of ordinance of, of, for our electrical inspector. Um, uh, we'll have a roll call on it. Is there any discussion on it prior to this? There's two of them, isn't it? Uh, commander. This, no, I guess it's just the one. It's just the one, the, but we had a contract the first time that went along with the ordinance. And now this is just the second reading of yeah. the ordinance. And who, bring me up to date, who is that, Larry? Blacklaw. Is that? Blacklaw. Larry Blacklaw. I thought for some reason, though, we did add a second one. I thought we had two. Well, there was, Miranda, I think, is correct. We have the contract with the electrical inspector directly, which incorporates what you pass in the ordinance. So okay. he's bound by the terms of the and ordinance. And we got a contractor that's helping? We've got a contract with him, yes. And then the, the ordinance dictate, dictates his uh, fees and those things. Okay. I was thinking we added a second electrical inspector too. Oh, it, no, I don't know about that. I just know we've contracted with the one. Okay. Uh, no further discussion. Uh, Miranda, if you do a roll call, it be in an ordinance. Barnes? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Okay. The next item, number nine, on the uh, park personnel. Who wants to, uh, what do I do here? Just. Okay. This is, yeah, this is at the park. The effective date is 10-9-22. Uh, the position and title is maintenance. It's full time. And the pay rate is 1439. Is that replacing a person or open position? Yeah, we got an open position. Jason Allen left. Okay. And I think that uh, that uh, he's already by executive she, order. Yeah, is that in his budget? We have one on file. He's already started. Okay. okay. What's the name? Uh, Charles Rayleigh, R E L E Y. Um, then we just need a roll call. And he's already out there working now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Barnes? Yes. Count? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. Okay. Miranda, who does the update on the arts program? That'd be Jimmy Cantrell. Oh, Jim. And Georgia. Jim. Good evening, everyone. Um, to give you a little rundown on the arts program first, um, since January the 18th of this last year, um, we provided 1,049 total resources to individuals here in the county. Um, 83 of them we sent to treatment. I got beds and got them into treatment. 81 into housing. Um, 101 we've gotten employment. Uh, we also uh, got 10 of them IDs and 8 of them birth certificates. Other resources we provided, 253. Uh, had a couple people that was referred to us by the courts that refused uh, the help from us. I think they didn't understand the program itself, and that was 25 people. Um, to give you a rundown on the monitoring system, and uh, Justin, when he comes back, he can even give you additional information on this. Uh, we do run the monitoring, and we of people have to go to jail. Uh, with the monitoring system, um, there is 4,207 days that 85 people have had spent in jail, if not being monitored. So that is 4,207 days that the county didn't have to pay for that person to be incarcerated. Yeah. That's and a so pretty good like savings, that. isn't it? Well, the savings on that, which there, there's a 
some problems with the numbers here a little bit, I can explain that. But if you look at it as far as costing $33 a day to house someone, if you compute that to the 4,207 days, that's equivalent to $138,402. Savings, uh, savings to the county. Plus, yes. you don't know all the medical treatments that they would have had to go. Look there for. was quite a few of those, as Jessica <laughs> probably has too. There's a few people that we had on monitors with that the medical bill had been rather significant. Uh, I think it's fair to say that, isn't it, Jessica? Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, it, what we've tried to do with, with this program is mainly those to where we need to monitor where they're at. Maybe it's a first time offender, but we'd like to know where they're at. Uh, the ones that are repeat offenders, uh, we, we try our best to, to, uh, uh, to offer more of, of the jail incarceration as opposed to home incarceration. So it just, it just depends. We've tried to, we've tried to utilize this program to the best to benefit. The cost is not the first factor. We, you know, right. Reoffending and punishment is, 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 is the main course of action when we look at any of those cases. And in lieu of spending that time in jail, um, we a lot of times are asked to assist that individual with whatever those needs are and report back that they have completed those programs and so forth. And we can kind of hold that over their head to encourage them to participate and make themselves more productive citizens. To not mean take up a lot of time, but to, a little side note on that. Um, Sunday, me and my wife was walking through Walmart and we got stopped by four different individuals. Uh, those four individuals walked up to us at different times, they wasn't together, but in different locations in Walmart, and, and told their story about how we had helped them so much. And some of them, a couple of them said, well, you probably even saved my life. One of them was holding a young child that was probably a year old that said, I wouldn't be here holding my child if not for you in this program. And my wife walked away and she said, this is one of the proudest moments I've had of you in my life, yeah. uh, to hear these stories. And that was four within... 45 minutes or so of Walmart. So it is impacting the community and it is helping tremendously um, in, in many areas. And that kind of leads up to something else I've been asked to introduce here. Um, currently, the in our program, we have 218 active cases. That's people we're actually working with still. Some of the cases we've closed out. Can you get a little closer to Mike? I can't yeah. hear you. Some, some of the cases we've already closed out uh, we've assisted over 300 individuals here in the county, but currently we have 218 active cases. Uh, of those 218 active cases, 43% um, of those people that we have been dealing with are homeless. Uh, there's an additional 6% that they themselves don't consider themselves homeless, but they're double stacked. And what we mean by double stacked is there's two families living in one home. Sometimes that works out for an extended period of time, sometimes it don't. It depends on the tensions in the home and whatever may take place. Um, so that's a total of 48% of our clients that we're seeing that uh, can't say that they have a residence of their own or they're homeless, living in, some of them even in tents. Uh, I went out last night, as Justin knows of this situation where we have a uh, juvenile that's living in a tent. Uh, that we went out last night to that family. It's not just him, but the family as well. Um, and there's several different offices here in Ohio County that provides resources to individuals uh, that are homeless or struggling that may become homeless because they can't pay bills or whatever. We have Audubon, which a lot of times we get those people at our location because they don't take walk-ins. They're not answering the phone. They, they'll, they'll speak to us about it. and. That's outside the purview of really what we do with the program because we're to assist those people in the court system and the jails and prisons. Um, so we've looked at trying to find a way to centralize some of that stuff and those people not have to run everywhere. We provide many of those resources as you can see for those people. Um, Georgia spent some time a couple weeks ago, um, my clerk that you guys provided for me, uh, going to Bowling Green to make sure those people had IDs uh, getting people birth certificates, helping them with getting driver's license. And some people may say, well, why is that important? When these people leave jail or prison, if they don't have these resources, they can't start to work. Federal government requires two forms of ID. We can't get them into housing. We can't get them into employment without those. So we assist with those. And we, we've been real successful in getting those people those types of resources. Um, 
But <clears throat> with that said, you know, we, we still deal a lot with those people that don't have a place to live. Um, I'm sure that Georgia would agree that that consumes a lot of our time right now. Um, we know that there's been times in the past, and in the past few months, it's been talked about about home and shelter and so forth like that. We're not asking for, for that at this time. Uh, what we're looking at is a person that could, and Georgia is personally discussed to be that person, just to work parallel with me in that office, and her focus would be not primarily, but still assisting the arts program, but working also with those uh, individuals that are homeless and gathering the data and seeing if there is a need and maybe presenting that back to the fiscal court in four or six months, whatever time frame they wanted, and be able to deliver those numbers to see if something needs to be done at that time. And uh, she would work parallel doing that with me, uh, still, still doing the same duties. And me and her had a long discussion on this today, asking her if she thought she could do that and would be willing to do that. Uh, and I think there was a couple other people here tonight that wanted to speak on this. Um, would you like to come up? Good evening. Uh, my name is Melanie Warga. Some of you know me, some of you don't. I am the director of the Ohio County Public Library. I've been at the library for about 23 years. Over the last five years, I have seen a dramatic shift in the number of individuals using the library who are in deteriorating financial situations or homeless. On an average day, our library provides support for between one and three families needing help with, as you said, Ottoman area filing with heating, water, and electric assistance. Uh, while these families are not yet homeless, many are teetering on the edge. We are very happy to do this, don't misunderstand. We are happy to help those. However, it is a growing need and it is fast outgrowing what we can provide. During the summer months, our library is a cool place. During the winter, it is warm. During bad weather, it is a safe and dry place. Due to this, as well as our proximity to the jail, we have a very large transient population. They use our library for a temporary shelter, sleeping on our couches, charging their devices, making phone calls using our phones, contacting family and friends using our computers, our internet, and even using our restrooms to bathe. Several are happy just to have a warm cup of coffee and a place to find peace from the situation that they find themselves in. Over the years, I have lost count of the number of patrons our employees have fed. So many patrons have nowhere else to go and no means to provide for themselves. Our employees, myself included, have provided food, assistance, and even bus fare to assist these transient populations because no one else has. They don't have anywhere else to go and they have no one else to turn to. Due to the increase in the need, our library has begun providing free crackers, free granola bars, things like that to assist, as well as our free coffee and bottled water. You will not believe the response. It is heartwarming and heart-wrenching because we have entire families coming to the library to eat dinner because they have nowhere else to go. They come and eat our granola bars and they eat our crackers and drink our bottled water because that is the meal that they have. None of this is to speak of the library or the employees. This is to point out the ever-increasing need we have in our community. The transient and homeless populations are growing and the need is real. I have led a sheltered life in my own home, but in the public, in the sector that I work, I get to see the rest of it. The library will continue to provide all of these services. We are happy to do that, and we will assist this community in every way possible. But the need is getting greater, and it is getting to the point where the library cannot sustain and support the ever-growing and increasing need that we have. Our efforts of providing relief but we really need to work together as a community with our community officials, our community members, and yes, the library as well. But we need to come together to find a way to, to assist this population because it is growing to the point where we are only scratching the surface. In fact, an addendum to this, we have someone that has been living in our carport where you can do our drive through to use our service. We have people that are living under our carport because it is a safe, dry place at night. 
and we do have a power outlet so they can charge their device. But when I came through the other day, there were cans of soup because they had been there eating their meal before we opened. So I just wanted to let you know, if you're not aware of the situation, if you're not seeing it personally, we are. And if there's any way that we can help, if there's any way that you can help, we need to do this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is John Cashin. I am the uh, pastor of Beaver Dam Baptist Church. I also uh, have the privilege of serving on the library board, and I'm so grateful and proud for the, quite frankly, the ministry that Melanie just described to you of that, uh, of that entity, and uh, grateful for the community support of that. I'm also involved with the Help Office, which is a, uh, a voluntary consortium of several of our local churches who pool their benevolence resources primarily to address uh, the needs of people who are struggling to pay utility bills or perhaps have, uh, just need groceries and things of that nature. And as I said, I'm also a pastor. And I promise you, I will be brief. You may be skeptical since I've already told you I was a pastor, but I promise I will be brief. But uh, there are some important things that we're talking about tonight. I know all of us remember back in December the tornado and the terrible disaster and the, and the damage that inflicted on uh, so many folks in our county. And we also, of course, remember with gratitude the amazing response of, of you and all of the various other entities that, uh, that helped with that. You had families and churches and faith-based groups and, of course, as I said, the government on, on all levels. And uh, as we experienced that uh, from the standpoint of churches, the particular brand of church didn't matter. And when it came to uh, governmental uh, participation, political affiliation didn't matter. All that mattered was that there was a need and it needed to be met. And there were people who were willing to help others, even if perhaps some of those who uh, needed to be helped maybe had not always made the best decisions or maybe not always had planned ahead as perhaps they should. And we did that, of course, because it was a very visible disaster. All I had to do was drive out 231 or Highway 69 and you could see what had happened. But as uh, Jimmy has described to you, and as Melanie has described to you, there is an ongoing invisible disaster that most of the time we don't want to think about and we want to turn our heads and we don't want to consider uh, what, what's going on. Uh, there are elderly people that have to choose between groceries and heat. I've talked to them on the phone on occasion. There are children who face deprivation through no fault of their own. And then as we've mentioned tonight, some families and individuals who, for whatever reason, have no place to call home, or they're living in a car, or as uh, we've heard, living in a tent. As a pastor and in my role with the health office, I talk with those people uh, often, many times, often at least several in a day. I am really grateful for all the resources that, that are present, the social services and the food pantry and Alderman area and, and, and the work that you do, Jimmy, is just amazing. Uh, been educated about that because we've had this task force that uh, Ann Melton and the judge executive have organized and it's been so helpful to hear what other people have been doing. It's been very, very encouraging. And, and then today I had the opportunity to visit with the folks at Father's House, which is the new addiction recovery center that's opening up in Beaver Dam, and to hear their heart for these folks who uh, have these significant problems. And uh, so I'm just grateful that in our community we have all these people who are invested or willing to help and care, whether they're working in a, in a, in a public entity or in a, in a faith-based entity or just as individuals trying to meet needs. We're grateful of that. When the possibility came up several uh, months ago of the, uh, perhaps of using some ARPA funds for a new approach to this homeless situation, I was excited. And I was excited about the potential for having some folks who had great experience in this being able to give guidance and perhaps leadership in this realm. And that excited me as well because at this point, when I talk to people who are homeless, uh, other than a couple of nights in a motel room, there's not much I can do for them around here. And we try to send them other places and so forth. But if they have connections here in some way or, or whatever, or even in some cases working here, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a real difficulty. Uh, and I'm grateful for the for the vision and the willingness of our county leadership, as I mentioned, Ann and the judge, to explore some new possibilities and to work with some other entities as partners in this disaster relief that we're talking about. So I just want to urge all of us, 
uh, and so here, here comes the sermon, okay? I just want to urge all of us not to let the invisibility of this disaster or the fear of the unknown or what might happen to prevent us from living out our faith or from expressing our love for our community and accepting our responsibility to care for what Jesus called the least of these and who all of us recognize are the people who really need our help. So thank you for uh, letting us speak tonight and for giving attention to this very real disaster that affects so many lives. And uh, my prayer is that all of us will respond with the wisdom and the compassion that this requires. And thank you for your time. Thank you, John. Thank you. I would just like to add another thing. I remember when I sat down there that I got a text message last night from one of our local law enforcement officers here in the county that said, Hey, Jimmy, I have a girl, 18, needs to finish high school. She's homeless. Is there anything we can do? And uh, I get these frequently. Um, so, like I said, what we're looking at doing is just not really creating a, um, or a new position, or what well, is a new position, but it's just a, basically a title change. Um, and like I said, Georgia working parallel. In my office, just gathering that data for how many months it takes to get to be able to present it back to the court for whatever the, the physical court feels needs to be done at that time. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, Jim. And I, I, think, I think I can say this on behalf of the court that we appreciate what you've done as the library and John as well, what uh, that you do to help. And I know in these times where inflation is like it is and where money certainly don't go like it used to, electric bills, heating bills, whatever the case may be, but I know. Uh, we all appreciate what you've done. And there's some of us won't be on the court in the next term, but I think I feel assured that uh, that the court will be here to help out in, in, in some of this. Hopefully there will be some help. Or they can be of some help. Hopefully. Okay, next item is Jerusalem Ridge Lease Agreement. Has everybody had an opportunity to, to uh, Look at that, review it, and uh, uh, if, uh, if I get somebody to entertain a motion in a second, we can, uh, we can discuss it. Yeah, I, I'll make the motion for discussion. I'll second for discussion. Motion made by Sam Small, second by Joe Barnes. Uh, <coughs> uh, discussion? If you recall, what's it? At our last meeting, it was brought up and we uh, decided we'd table it. I think the Court of Parliamentary Procedure is supposed to remove it from the table with a motion, but uh, have you had an opportunity to look at it and see if there, if you have any questions about it whatsoever? Is yeah. this the same agreement we've been entered into before? I believe so. I wasn't a, a part of the court back then, but it's my understanding that in 2012, it's the same or similar. Was that, was that right? Or, or previously, pre, whatever, yes. which one ever previously executed? This is the one that we was uh, we were talking about. We didn't know what the changes were because we didn't have it. Yeah, yeah. Copy the three, yeah. two or three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. No, I mean it, it, this was a similar agreement was written some time ago. It is for a ten-year term, at minimal or, or nominal rate of, of rent. Um, mainly the the. the Operator, which is the Jerusalem Ridge, uh, Bill Monroe Bluegrass Music Foundation of Kentucky, will take the first 500 in the normal maintenance. <coughs> or if there's an issue under 500, they'll take it. Anything over and above that would still be a responsibility of the county. The only the determination is, uh, as far as if we wanted uh, to uh, terminate this, it's if either if that organization ceases to exist. Or B, if there is a breach of the uh, uh, of this agreement that cannot be cured within 30 days, or or if uh, one becomes insolvent or bankrupt or anything of that nature. That's my understanding. This is the agreement that they have done. Previously. Just, Justin, what did you say the amount was that they would, uh, if it was incurred, what what their uh, uh, section they seven. This was kind of, this was in the prior agreement. Just. To, uh, indicates that the operator, operator being the Bluegrass Music Foundation, 
I shall maintain the upkeep, paint, and make all necessary minor repairs, uh, $500 and under, uh, to the premises for the duration of the agreement. Uh, and then we would have any major maintenance repairs, anything over 500. So is that for a yearly, or is that uh, is that based on <coughs> over 10 years? No, I think that's. Easy. I think we can put that annually if we want. But what this is seems to indicate to me uh, is that if there's a repair that needs to happen, it's under 500. They will take care of it. If it's over 500. We would take care. So it's not a cumulative. No, it's no. it's, it's just a it? per repair. What's the okay. term of the lease? Ten. Ten years. Ten years. Mm -hmm. Is that? I don't know. It's that saying that? rent here. Uh, just a dollar, I think, is what the, the uh, a year per year. Yes, per year is what it was indicated in the in the last one. I have a little bit of concern about it being ten years. Term. It's a long. Year it's a long time. Yes, it's just a long time to. Uh, I think you kind of don't be, know what the financial situation of the county is going to be. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is uh, you know, most of our terms are all based on four years. I'd rather it be a uh, four, four years. years. Right. Yeah. You're right. Gonna, I would agree. Four trouble would be changing that to four years. Mm -hmm. Again, mean, uh, would take, would can, take we, can we go ahead and adopt it with that stipulation? Yeah, I think you can adopt it with the amendment being that the term would be for a four year period of time. Uh, this one does indicate uh, uh, language which would indicate that the parties may negotiate an additional extended uh, similar term and when those negotiations are to uh, uh, commence. So I can keep that language with the exception that 10 year would be changed to four year throughout that term, throughout yeah. that. Well, that, at least that way, uh, if there's something that, they, that they develops that needs to be changed in a lease agreement, within the next court, the next court can do it. You're not bypassing actually two courts um, on a 10 year lease. Now, they can terminate at any time, but can the court? Well, uh, so we've indicated the if a party ceases to exist, well, we're not gonna cease to exist. Or if we breach the agreement, material breach, or we become bankrupt or insolvent or whatever, uh, that's the indications of, of termination. Uh, certainly, if they cease to exist or something of that nature, it would just okay. it, would, it would terminate under its terms there. Okay. Through uh, proper notice. If I could uh, get uh, someone on the court to entertain a motion with that uh, amended uh, agreement, so uh, four years. Now you already had a motion by Sam. Oh, have you? Yeah, so we could just discuss. Discuss it. Okay, so do we need to withdraw that motion? Or no, we can just amend, amend that motion to indicate that it be four years. So I amend my motion to change to four years from the ten years, such as Justin uh, proposed. And I'll amend my second. Okay. okay. If there's no further discussion, then uh, let, let's let's roll call that. You want to grab it? All right. Barnes. Yes. Count. Yes. yes. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Uh, Justin, I think you're up on the employee over here in Judge, Burnett. just a second. I wanted to ask uh, Jimmy something. Do we need to act on any part of this tonight as far as uh, when you ask for Georgia to work as parallel, do we need any action on that tonight? Um, it would be beneficial unless the fiscal court felt that they needed to, to wait. Uh, act, act upon what saying what are you and I guess it's a title change just a title change just to where that while she's working with Jimmy she can also put together something on this homeless shelter and on this homeless I don't think item. we ought to in several reasons one you know these y'all doing a super job but you get bogged up and you can't take care of this we're not gonna move it to harm nobody else and as far as people homeless, I feel for them. But all they got to do is come get a job instead of going to the library. They could be out working and, buy, and find them a place to rent. I mean, there's places to work everywhere. So, and I'm just, I'm not for that. I can't vote for it. I can't support it. How about we, uh, we look at that, any of the title change or anything, maybe through the, uh, the, uh, Ways to make it. Yeah, because we, we do have that uh, as far as the requirements on each title, and I hate to, to do something and we don't have it all lined out. I mean, I know it's really 
same position. We're just kind of changing a few things. So let's just give a little bit of time maybe to think about everything on that, and okay, we'll go from there. Joe, will you have Sam meet for our next meeting yeah, or whatever? Yeah, we you, can meet. You present us with the the description and the title that and to me and Joe and to Ann. I'll email it to y'all. And that way we can uh, look over it and we'll take care of this. Sam, what's the earliest you can meet after this? Right before the next meeting. Is it four, four o'clock? Four o'clock. What's it? Four o'clock. Jim, don't you have access to several jobs that people could get? Yes. But right now our focus is with those people that's going through the judiciary system that has either been incarcerated or are on the front end of possibly being incarcerated. Mm -hmm. It's not the general public. But, uh, I mean, there's jobs out there and people could be working instead of going to the library. I mean, that's just my opinion. That's how I feel about it. I, I just can't support it. But get that to us before the next court meeting so we can look over it and we'll have a wage scale meeting. I'll ask the judge if he would allow a wage scale meeting at 4 o'clock before the next meeting and we'll discuss that before. Okay. Thank you, Jim. Uh, Justin, did you want to pick up here on the employment reimbursement? Well, it, we emailed um, a proposed agreement that, that we, we were requested to write with with regard to uh, an individual that uh, the county would pay to have his CDL training and for him to be a CDL, uh, I assume Class A operator. Um, the cost is approximately, my understanding, about $6,000. Well, certainly the county didn't want to put that up and then the employee uh, terminate that relationship right soon thereafter. Uh, so there is a, a pro rata payment uh, reimbursement if the employee were to leave uh, uh, prior to a two-year period of time. Now, after two years, uh, I think uh, uh, Mr. Woolen thought that that was appropriate as far as considering how much we pay. That's two years after the CDL has been acquired. Yes, sir. So, so you know, because is you know, it legal to uh, get money from them, or do they have to pay it? Yeah. So, I mean, you can you can enter into an agreement because uh, a lot of times uh, 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 police agencies do this. Uh, the person uh, does not necessarily have that amount of funds up front to pay for the significant training that's needed for to be an operator or uh, a deputy or that. Uh, the county or government can pay for that for to train the employee, but they do want some uh, enforcement on if the, if the employee were just to leave. And the new changes on law on, on attaining your CDL, uh, you have to go through a four-week class pay for us and uh, they're or do an internet course or whatever it's uh it's making a lot harder for the some of the working uh, the people's already working to maintain their job while they obtain that license mm -hmm. I mean you, you saw it in a lot of police agencies and, and different departments because there is a I mean that cost I think can be now over ten thousand dollars when I was on the city commission we had sent some people to the academy and they after they got their certification they left and went yeah. us and left beer down with the bill yeah and, and so that's what the, the the government the uh, various agencies tried to stop that from happening because they were out a lot of money without any, without any benefits so is it prorated so if they decide to leave uh, at the end of a year then they're only going to pay back three thousand yeah so it, it just says three thousand after a year uh, if the if the employee stays there for 18 months, then it would be 1,500. And it might be good if there's any way I don't know, Justin, that you can word it uh, in there. Uh, so if we put this contract together, and that that price fluctuates a little bit. You know, yeah, we can. We uh, that you know half of it will be only half of it would be required after a year, and you know by a percentage based on the total amount that it costs to obtain the license. And we can write it that way. We can write it that whatever cost that we're at, and that's what a lot of them do because they yeah. don't necessarily know what the cost is. I think we, need, we might need to leave that a little bit uh, uh, flexible on the amount because, you know, this is this is a new thing. So there's going to be more agencies offering these courses at a cheaper rate probably in the future. And uh, and then also, you know, uh, they'll allow the programming to, to flex to whatever cost it was so if the court would I guess be willing to entertain the motion um, to have this training certificate reimbursement contract entered into 
uh, with the understanding that the amount paid for the CDL uh, would be reimbursed by the employee and the understanding that the proration would be one half of that amount as of a year, one fourth as of 18 months, I can make those amendments in the contract. So accept the contract with those amendments if you wish. Yeah, I'd make a motion for that. Okay, motion by Joe Barnes. Second. Second with Sam Small. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor say aye. And if you can say aye. I, I heard a question down there he was asking and I don't yeah, know. Okay. Yeah, so if if they were to take the class and not pass, okay, it is still if they're not there for two years, uh, it, they would have to reimburse us. Okay? If they're past employment of two years, then whether they passed it or not, <coughs> we would not be or the contract specifically states we are not responsible for any repeat uh, training or, or anything or retest. So if they have to retest, that's on them. Right. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion passed. Uh, we're down to committee reports. Uh, do we have any committee reports? Sam, Joe, Larry? Okay. No committee reports. Uh, it's the magistrate's comments and requests. We'll start with you, Sam. Uh, just everybody remember your neighbors. Uh, it's getting colder outside. Uh, Walk over and check on them. Uh, keep a heads up. Watch them. If uh, you know, if, if you see a neighbor that you think might be in trouble, go over and visit and, and see how we can help. And uh, the other thing is is for everybody just to remember to go vote on November eighth. Uh, no matter who you vote for, just go vote. Uh, that's all I have. Thanks, Sam. Joe. Uh, I was just going to reiterate the uh, election because uh, when we meet next time, we'll know who is actually sitting on court. So it'll be exciting time. But uh, just everybody get out and vote, and uh, uh, you know it's your right and it's your privilege, and everybody should try to to uh, make time to go do that. Very well said, Larry. You don't seem to ask the judge not to hurt anything when we're going to get our black top and done, or we even going to get it. Yeah, I found out something about it today, Larry. It's all going to the fourth district. <laughs> he said that's the way somebody's getting it. Adjourned. <laughs> 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 a little humor there, I'm sorry. A lot of humor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I did, the judge did say he talked to Scotties and they were trying to finish up wherever they were so they could get back here. Okay. So. How about the car employees to try to finish it up? What, whatever other counties. I really, the, the last I heard from them it was the parkways just trying to get them done. You know, well, we've had some beautiful weather to do it in and some yeah. continued weather coming. Yeah, it's, it's coming back. Yeah. It'll be warm again. So. Does anybody in the audience have any uh, anything they want to discuss before the court? Uh, what about the bookends back there? Adam and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a... Uh, meeting is... Larry. Is a, Yes. I have, it's been a while since I've had the privilege of coming to the fiscal court meeting and actually came in support of our um, good work done by the committee addressing our indigent population. Um, but just while I'm here, just to say, just give a quick update that the surgical facility is progressing well. The, our code project and the bond that we're using to enhance and increase services for our community is right on track. Um, we have been very fortunate that we've had very few um, supply issues. Well, I know a lot of other construction projects have been plagued by that. And we're really hoping, gentlemen, that we will have um, a wonderful um, grand opening ribbon cutting by the 1st of March. Is that right? And, That's good news. Um, you want to come tour, hopefully not to use it, but to come tour it. So yeah. we want to say thank you again for your um, your partnership with Ohio County Healthcare, and we're looking forward to what it's going to mean to our community. You're more than welcome. We thank you. Thank you very much. Larry, I, had, I do have one thing. Uh, yes. The ATV community uh, motor trail, whatever. Yes, I'm kind of interested in that. Uh, mm -hmm. Justin's going to be sending Miranda a copy of kind of what's being worked so, up and as a, a possibility. Um, just um, we're going to talk about it again on the. the uh, I think we got a meeting November seventh on it. But anyway, uh, is it November fifteenth? Okay. Oh, for fiscal court. 
Yeah, no, I'm talking about the side. Yeah, right. cool. No, so if we can get copies to all the magistrates, yeah. maybe where they can look over some things, so then we can discuss it in the November 7th meeting. That'd yeah, be great. Uh, I hear a lot of discussion up in my part of the country yeah. uh, about yeah. it, and uh, some, most is positive and some. Well, well uh, there's a, uh, anytime there's something new out there, it can be good or bad. That's true. So we're just looking into the all the options. Yeah. So. If uh, someone would entertain a motion to adjourn, so I move. And a second? Second. Move. All in favor? Aye. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Larry.